Hey, so she said I could take the kayak with us on this trip to Florida. I don't know anything about fishing offshore. I only bait fish. What do I need to know? Leaders, lures, bait, where to get it, how to get into the boat. I need everything and I need it now. I don't like to read. Short attention span, you know me. It's not going to work. Shortest version possible. What do I need to fish offshore in the Gulf Coast? And go. You got it. First of all, disclaimer, I'm not telling you that these are the best ways to do it, the only ways to do it, or the right ways to do it. I'm just telling you what I've done, and this is my experience fishing the Texas Gulf and Florida. If you disagree with my brand choices, I don't care. This is what I fish. If you don't like my not tying techniques, I don't care. This is what I do. This is only my opinion and with my experience from fishing offshore. Not the ultimate, last, definite ruling on how it's to be done. It's just the way I do it. Rule number one, life jacket. Rule number two, travel in parties of two or more. You get jammed up, you can't reach the radio, you're unconscious, your buddy can call. Get somebody to come rescue you. Rule number three, carry a radio so you can call so somebody can come rescue you. Each state, the laws vary. Those are my top three. Uh, some states require safety flags, whistles, etc. If you're going to do something stupid, do it right at least. Life jacket, parties of two or more, and a radio. All right, let's start off with shark leaders. I have an entire video based on this leader. It's my homemade shark leader, never had one fail yet. 16 knot hook, sorry, 16 knot hook. Can go down to a 12 for shark. Bull red will take these. You can go down to a normal 12 aught for bull red. Uh, bull red, you don't have to have the heavy line. Weed eater line, mind you. You can use 60 pound monofilament and be fine for bull red but I tend to go for shark when I'm in that area and so this is what I use for everything I've had one foot long sharks take horse mullet this big on this hook even though the shark itself is only this big next one for kingfish the number one bait we use in Texas for kingfish is ribbon fish on a leader like this 12 to 8 inches on the first line teaser weight wrap not to the hook next one to the hook down to a follow-up hook you can do it to a third one this comes into play for another type of bait that's an emergency so, to wrap this, take your handy dandy hook, stay, your wire, use two colors so you guys can see, run your wire through the hook, start with a gentle twist, about three turns, maybe four. Then when you get here, you're going to start turning tighter. Now, here's the trick that nobody tells you on the videos. Is as you're spinning your wire, press down with your thumb. My expertise of wrapping Romex, no, Romex is lacking. Here, let's do it this way. If you increase your pressure going that direction,
it comes out nice and tight. If not, you come out with a loose version kind of like this, but just kind of spreading. Trust me, other fishermen will judge you by your twist. It's kind of stupid, but people do it. So this is what it would look like. Loose spin coming up into a tight spin. When you get here, take your wire cutters, crimp down on it, twist, it pops off, and it's supposed to give you an ending without a jagged edge. I don't. I actually cut in really close and always assume that there's a sharp edge that's going to cut me, so I just don't touch it. Okay, so one other benefit of this is on trips to Florida, they don't have ruben fish in their bait shops. They have sardines and other stuff, cigar minnows, <laughs> and well, this is too big for both. And on that particular trip, they didn't have ballyhoo, which is my preferred bait now. And what am I supposed to do? And so I had a bunch of these with three hooks on them. So I did is clip the head of one fish in the first one, second one, third one. Now I had a school of fish chasing my teaser, and I picked up some cobia close to shore. Improvise, it works a little gnarly, but it pays off. Now, let's put a fish on this thing. Okay, so ribbon fish. Looks like an eel crossed with a mirror. This one is still a wee bit frozen. When you buy them, you're going to buy them by the dozen. Take your first, first hook. It's normally going to be a bait hook. I'm too lazy, so I use trebles in the front too. And a lot of people refuse to use trebles because of the safety hazards, flopping around, snag you, and we use bait hooks for all of them. By the way, this spacing here is about 8 inches, 6 to 8 inches, and then your next one will be 6 to 8 inches. Hook it in under the jaw, up through the head. That way it's pulling the fish straight on, and then loosely... Attach that one on the side. Run your weight down. Throw it up behind your kayak. Paddle away 50 feet, 75 feet, 100 feet. Then engage your, your reel with the drag on really light and start trolling it. Don't have to go crazy on speed. You just have to be moving. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I'll try to answer them. If you want a video on this alone with more details, drop it in the comments. Okay, well I clean this up on Ballyhoo. When you look at the package, there's going to be some poo coming out of it. Look to see if it's green, like um, grass stains on tennis shoes green. If it's green, it's pretty fresh. If it's brown, see if you can find something fresher. On ribbon fish, what you're looking for is that mirror image going down its back to be undamaged. Once they get old, the skin becomes really fragile and they tend to peel up and stuff and they probably don't smell that great to other fish. Old ones don't work that great. Look for the biggest shine possible on ribbon fish. On ballyhoo, Green poo. So, back to the ballyhoo. Back to ballyhoo. So I mentioned I'm using titanium on these. I'm using titanium quite a bit on my kingfish leaders too. On the ribbonfish leaders too. But this stuff is more expensive. A bunch of companies sell it. And it's nifty. Uh, one liter can outlast a stainless steel easy. It's got some shock resistance. It'll stretch a little bit. And a lot less dangerous to tie. Now you can either use crimps, which I never have, or you can tie it. This is not wrapped like stainless steel. It's actually tied in a knot. So, the way you tie... Okay, so the way you tie titanium is like a simplified version of a clinch knot. So, clinch knot, 
run it through your hook, spin around eight times or so, come back down, tighten it up if it's a modified, pass it back through that loop, and yeah, it doesn't look as pretty as it does on the string. That's how you tie a clinch knot. So, the big difference is with titanium is you don't want to do that many twists. One twist, two twist, come back through, and if you see, this kind of creates a figure eight. When you tighten up the titanium, it will create a figure eight. This will stay open to a degree. It'll shape like an infinity. I thought I tied it wrong. And I tied it. And I retied it. And I retied it. And I finally gave up. Researched it some more. Tried it some more. Came out the same way. Called my losses. And I went and tried it. And got some big fish on. And turns out I was tying it right. little tab you can cut it off you can leave it on this one here looks like I did three twists never do more than three two is what I like try it see what you think okay so next is ballyhoo rig so the reason why I switched over to ballyhoo is because in Texas when tournaments are going on the ribbon fish sell out there's none to be found so you can do a straight artificial and that's fine but if you do want bait you have to improvise and I don't like using um, cigar minnows etc they're too small not flashy enough I just doesn't work for me each person has their own preference Ballyhoo on the other hand is not very commonly used by kayakers in Texas so perfect for me so my Ballyhoo rigs are titanium one ounce weight and a hook then I have one ounce weights actually one eighth ounce weights with a tiny rubber band fed through it I'll try to show you what that looks like so let's see if we got some ballyhoo ballyhoo you buy it frozen just dropped a fish cube who's not ready yet okay let's try this again let's see if I break one loose yeah it's cool fish so many bad words Hey, kind of sort of got one off. Okay, Ballyhoo. Kind of like the ribbon fish. It's shiny. It's about nine inches long. We're not counting the bill. On the bill, go about half an inch off, back and forth, break it off. If you don't, the fish is going to go this way, that way, kind of like a stick bait for bass fishing. And you won't be able to troll it, won't be able to, it won't troll, won't control it, and won't be able to troll it right. Much like bass fishing bait, pick a spot about where you want it, beat it in, beat it down, poke it out. Now it's got a hook on it. The split in this bill, run the wire through that, and your weight comes down. Okay, so I mentioned a 1 8 weight and a rubber band. Take your rubber band, 
feed it through your little one eighth inch egg. And you'll have loops on either side, right? So feed it over its head and behind the gills. This one attaches in behind the gills and this side attaches on the bill. What that does, it keeps him chin heavy and straight while you're pulling him and the rubber band over the bill holds the mouth closed so it's not going crazy every which way. And that's just a little one eighth egg weight. So what it would look like is the weight would be right here under its chin. Open the gills up, put the rubber band in behind, comes over and holds the mouth down. You can use this with or without a teaser and you're just trolling it. You don't have to go crazy fast, just keep moving. Um, I, my largest king to date was caught on one of these, not on a ribbon fish. My second largest was on a three inch lure. You never can tell. Let me clean up this table real quick and we'll keep going. Okay, next up, monofilament or fluorocarbon. This is a 15 foot selfish leader that I used in a tournament a while back. Circle hook, non-offset. This would work for kingfish, it would work for snapper, a bunch of other stuff that you just have chunk bait on. Sit over a reef, Texas an oil rig, drop it down, reel it up and you got a snapper. Um, with selfish, way more complicated than that, but the same leader does the same thing. This is almost identical to a redfish leader. Uh, 12 out hook, circle hook, and about three foot would do fine for a redfish leader. That's it for leaders. So, on to lures. Okay, lures. First off, no hate mail because I didn't mention your favorite lures. These are my favorite lures. Everybody's got their own, and it has to do more with your confidence and mojo than it does anything else. If you, it sounds superstitious, but if you feel that lure is going to do better than that lure, then it probably is. Three inch super pokey. Wicked cool color. Um, they come in all kinds of colors. Blues and silvers are a great color. Uh, this is my favorite. I call this one Jack Candy because Jacks just love these things. Find a school of bait fish, troll it around the outside, you're going to grab a Jack. My most favorite lures, and they're a tad bit expensive, are Halcos. They used to be about $12 on Amazon. They're running for about $20. I've had these just sitting there while I'm tying off another lure and had kings just nail it while it's just floating there. Not doing a stinking thing, not trolling, just sitting there. And they'll hit it. I love these lures. Um, buddy of mine, Professor Salt, he'll come back with zero decals, completely cleaned out from all the kings hitting them while he was out. Good money investment as long as you got good knots so you don't lose it. Anything shiny should work. Don't remember what these were, but they were inexpensive. I think I got these for like six bucks. What I would do is change the hooks three times or four times hooks. When you go to Academy or wherever, It'll say on three times treble or four times treble, four times, crazy strong, and they're not going to bend it out. Most of these hooks, Kingfish gets on, they're going to straighten them out. This minor improvement goes a long ways. Jigging, not my thing. I do believe in it. I just have never practiced it. Drop jig down, almost to the bottom, pull it up about a foot, and start working up fast that Vertical movement just screams, prey fish, trying to get away, don't eat me, yeah! and they snag on. Snapper candy, way to go. Find a lure that you feel good about, something shiny, something contrasting colors, red and white, pink and green, 
blue and silver, silver. Find something, troll it back about 50, 100 feet, and just paddle. Do your thing. You don't have to go crazy. I've caught fish standing still. I've caught fish in no man's land. I'm a slow paddler, and I still catch fish. You don't have to go fast. Okay, so next is... Okay, so next is gear. The one thing I am biased about is kayaks themselves. Get the best thing you can for the application you're in. I do mostly offshore. Viking is my favorite brand. Uh, there are other good brands out there too. Find something that's appropriate for what you're going to do. Paddles. Paddles is where it gets a little bit more important. Spend at least 80 bucks on a paddle. Anything lower than that is going to have a bad design on it. You're going to wear yourself out. I am not a gear snob, and that's one thing that I don't really chimp out on. I do think most of my pedals are 80 to 125 bucks. Most everybody else I know is looking 300 and up. Don't go below 80 if you can't. If you can, if, yeah, don't go below 80. Reels and rods. Yes, you can get bells and whistles. You don't need to to start out. Uh, for years and years and years, pin 209 level winds. Very, it's it's a winch is what this is. Got a good drag on it. They're crazy cheap, 60 to 80 bucks. Uh, Kingfish, everything else I've caught on it. I upgraded when I went for Selfish. And I think these actually have better drags than my Finnors. Highly forgiving. Um, I've turtled, gotten soaked in water, salt water coming in, got home, hosed it off, deemed taken apart, still no problems. Every once in a while, spray WD 40 on the star drag, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Level wind, if you get some big kinks and they start zipping out line, it can jack you up. And so, if you wanted to, you can take the level wind off. But budget line, I mean budget wise, it's it's a great place to start. You can't lose. And if it does fall over, you're not crying because you lost $400 with a reel. Rod, to this day, I still don't spend more than 25 bucks on my offshore rods. Seven foot or longer, because if the fish is going from that side to that side at high rate of speed, you don't want the line going underneath your boat, cutting a line on the bottom of your boat. Seven foot gives you enough re reach to get you on the other side of the boat and let that fish keep going that way to fight it back in. You can buy more expensive rods, but for trolling, it's not really a finesse game. For jigging, apparently there is some finesse in it, and there are specialty rods, and I had no people swear by them. But the same people swear by their $400 rods, too. So, I don't spend more than $25 on my offshore rods. And I've snapped one. And I think it already had some damage. It was off of a green three-foot shark. He was too green. I had him too close too fast. And I had it maxed out. Drag was all the way down with 80-pound braid. He hit the boat, and the last jerk just snapped my rod in half. I did catch the fish though. I got him in, leadered him, let him go. Uh, the only other one I've snapped was in the surf and pretty much boat flipped over and drug in the sand all the way in and at some point it finally snapped it. But you know what? I didn't cry because it was $25 rod. So next week I bought another rod and I'm fine. I'm generally on a tight budget so that matters to me. Much more than finesse. Bull reds and sharks, you're going to fish like they're catfish. So you're going to drop your bait out. Sharks, you're going to suspend it from the top of the water with an inflatable buoy. And it's going to hang down six to seven feet and put that food right in the shark's prime feeding area. 
Bull Red, you're going to cast it out without any weight on it and just let it sink to the bottom and do its thing. Both of them, you're going to take your reel, you're going to disengage the drag, put the clicker on, put them in the rod holders, and wait. When it starts to click, 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 take the drag, ah, take the clicker off and quickly reel it in. Do not set the hook. The circle hooks, circle hooks will pull straight out of its belly and out of its mouth if you try to set it. But if you just reel it out quickly, it'll pull through its gut and get stuck right here in the mouth where you can easily remove the hook. That's the goal. Because if you're not going to keep it, you don't want to kill it. So, Bull Red and Shark, do not set the hooks. Reel them in. It's disengaged. Click her on until the click goes off. Engage it. Spin it. Pelagic fish offshore are going to be a tad bit different. So they're going to be going from nothing to 60 in a split second. So if you have your reel disengaged, immediate bird's nest. My first king ever. I didn't know what I was doing, honestly. And complete mess. And I had to reel it in over the bird's nest. And he broke the line right beside the boat. And I didn't get my very first kingfish or a picture with it or anything else. What you do is put it out to drag. What you do is throw it out to troll, engage it, and reduce your drag. Reduce it until you start pulling out line, turn it back, tighten it up a little bit more. That way when the kingfish hits, you're trolling along nice and slow and all of a sudden thing runs off. It's got some resistance to keep this thing from spreading out. Now it's <coughs> taken off, reel it in. Uh, it's pretty much already set it, so I've never actually had to set fish offshore because he already hit it at a dead run and that thing went in. As soon as that resistance hits and you start pulling him back, it's done. It, it's, it's stuck in his jaw. Um, so you fought it and you got it back to the boat. Now he sees your boat and he's going to freak out. No matter what the species is, it's going to dive or it's going to run. Fine. Let it. You're there to play with it anyways. Reduce your drag, let it run off, fight it back in. When it gets closer to the boat, drop your drag down, because if he dives, you don't want to go over with him. Don't be so greedy about that one fish that you lose all the gear in your boat when you turtle over. Let him dive. You'll fight him back. This is why you're out here. You're not for count, you're out here to fish. You're out here to fight, to do your part at water's level against a big stinking fish. But don't let one fish cost you all your gear. Let him dive. Reel him back in. If he's fighting hard enough to go again, let him go back out. Fight him back in. If it's a kingfish, you can grab it by a tail, flop it in your lap, unhook it. Uh, you can gaff it if you're going to keep it. You can try to bogo grip it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Depending on the fish is what you're going to be looking at is how to get it in and how you're going to keep it. Uh, snapper, I've bogoed them. Um, jacks, tail flopped them. Kings, I've tail, tail flopped. Uh, cobia, you have to kill before you get them in. you got to hit them on the head and they'll turn white and then you get them in. Uh, never try using a gaff on a feisty cobia because you will lose your gaff. Now, if you gaff a fish and it decides to dive, if you can't automatically hold it, let it go and let it take your gaff. Don't strap it around because it's going to pull you with it. Once again, don't let one fish cost you the rest of your gear. How expensive is a gaff compared to a very nice rod and reel? Or two rods and reels, three rods and reels and a camera and a GoPro and your lunch and water. That one fish isn't worth it. Let him take it down. Chances are the gap is still going to be in him. Fight it back up. Get him into your lap. Do what you got to do. Put him in the fish bag. Take him back. 
give them to your co-workers if you don't want to eat them. I t do fish fries when I get big kings. I get a couple big kings. I'll take it back to the plant and feed my second shift. Do a fish fry for them. Give it away. It's all good. They're happy. I'm happy. I'm not eating five months worth of mercury rich fish. Um, if you have any questions, drop them below. I'm happy to ask your questions. If you want me to give more details on stuff or a video with more details on something specific, let me know. Um, I'll drop a link below for the shark leader and for a bull red tutorial. Once again, I'd like to thank Viking for everything they do. They've supported me for a couple of years now. I love you guys. Anyways, take it easy. I'll catch you outside, guys.